So with our surprising playoff finish last season, there was a big, big job on hand in the summer transfer window. We needed to improve on the team that we had to see if we can cement another playoff position and go one step further and challenge for the title in our third season using only homegrown players. Bringing in a total of 15 new players. I know, we've brought in some players so far in three seasons. It's ridiculous. Whilst losing six. Three of them for some decent, decent money. I don't know what the hell was going on at Sheffield United at the moment, but they came in for bids with three of our players. We raised need just under half a million in the sale of three players. We got one back on loan, but nevertheless, we've done well. So the players out was Jeremiah Alumu. Had a good season last year. He's gone Sheffield United for a fee of 250000 which is the max I can get out of him. I did want a bit more. He was saying no. I got a loan back for the season, so he's back at Western for this season. Max Dickoff, he went as well. That's a weird signing. For 100 k of that album. He's right here tonight. He got an extra 10 k out of it. It's a very, very, very weird signing for them. And also, Archie Whitehall left for 80k. I wanted more. They weren't going to pay more, but he went happy. But he's young. He's only 19, so a total of 425k earned from three players. Sheffield Niners. They're in the Premier League. I don't know what's going on. And we brought in a load of three transfers. Max Deutsch, a defender, 22 years old. He'd do well. Bola Olanuga, a winger. Looks decent. Brian Wilson, a right back, decent. Uh, Rio, can't pronounce his last name, not going to try. Decent central midfielder. Dante Casanova, another right back, can play central mid slash DM, which is good. Oakley Cananea, a striker from Liverpool, who's released from Liverpool. Looks a really, really good striker. Joe Young, a goalkeeper, the replacement for Griffiths. Callum Redhead as well, another striker slash cam, but we're not playing a cam formation. So a striker, 14 finishing, eight composure has got to work on, which he is. He's only 18 years old. Got a bit of pace about him as well. 18 year old central midfielder Dan Casey as well. Charlie Warren, another goalkeeper, backup, possibly 18 years old, young. Lots and lots of potential. Taylor Foran, a 21 year old experienced centre back. Just need a few more experienced players at the back. And finally, 34-year-old Sean Hutchinson, released by Millwall. Experience. He's going to do well in the National League. His experience player is what we need. So we have changed the tactic again. We've gone to the 4-2-4 formation that we used before. And if I pick best 11 without restrictions, this is the best 11 we've got. We have Joe Young in goal. We've got Wilson, Foran, Deich, Norville Williams, Casanova and Laffrey. Onangua, Jasper Patterson, Ole Tunde, and Kalanir up front. Done well so far at the start of the season. Won the first game 3 2 against Solid Hold Moors. We then drew 3 all against our bitter rivals, Yeovil, and they are literally bitter rivals. Scoring two late goals to get the draw in the 90th and 94th minute. This is where I'm thinking defensively, we're not there. We're shipping in the very late goals. Lost 4 2 to Cheltenham. Again, Two late goals, 82nd and 87th minute cost us. 2-1 to Sutton. And then we win 2-0 against Woking. Which means currently we sit 12th in the National League on 7 points after 5 games played. Warsaw are flying high. And the bookmakers predict if we finish 13th now. That's great. Because last year we were meant to finish 23rd. So we can finish 13th. Be fantastic if we finish higher than 13 gets playoffs again i'll be happy with that massively happy with that also our favorites to go with bromley cheltenham watchdale crawley south end there's some big teams here in the national league and it's not going to be easy to get out of this league and of course fa cup we can get into the first round of the fa cup this year that'd be fantastic and the fa trophy semi-finals last year if we can get to the final and win it be fantastic it's good that the club reputation is going up. It's not that good that the board don't want to improve anything. I've made requests for facilities. Everything gets rejected. It's just one of those things. Board being the board. We are still a part-time team. We're not a full-time... We're not a professional team, but as far as I know, anyway. 
So we're not a professional team. We're still a part-time team, which could hinder us massively if we need to step up and go again. We'll see what happens in the season, and then if we're not promoted automatically, because when we go into the Football League, we've got to be a professional team. We have to apply for it at the end of the season. Let's see what happens. All we can do. Right, season three of having a Western Super homegrown challenge. Playoffs last year. FA Trophy semi-final. What can happen this year? September, and we started off with a two-all draw against Dorkin, conceding a 93rd minute equaliser. Max Dice got us underway in the sixth minute before Daniel Otunde made it 2-0 in the 11th minute. Bobby Kamwa, 18th minute, got Dorkin back in it, but in the third minute of injury time, Dorkin got their equaliser. We followed that up with a 5-2 win over Boreham Wood. Harry Burt whistle with the goal for Bournemouth on the 40th minute before we equalised just on the stroke of half-time for Goburn. Second half and Dante Casanova made it 2-1 before Ollie Wright made it 2-2, game still on. Three minutes for end, Alumu in the 87th minute gave us a 3-2 win. Oakley Canaria made it 4-2, one minute into injury time. And then Tom Oilett in the fourth minute of injury time made it 5-2. In the league, we are right down the bottom in 16th place, struggling to get some points together. October, and we face Warsaw at the Bescott Stadium, coming away with a point after Oakley Cannonier got the goal in the 29th minute from a strike just outside the box. McEntee got Warsaw's equaliser in the 41st minute and all the points were shared. We did have a shock defeat in the FA Cup 4th qualifying round, losing 3-1 to Weymouth, no cup run this year. But we smashed Bromley 5-1 in the league. Oli Ewan getting Bromley underway in 20 minutes before Oakley, Cannonier getting the first goal back for us in the 31st minute. And Gunya in the 36th minute and then Patterson in the 38th minute, making it 3-1 for Alunga and again in the 44th minute make it 4-1 at half time just over the hour mark and Cannonier get the fifth and with some good results we start to climb up the table we're just outside the playoffs 10 points off Scunthorpe November and we went all the way to Flamingo landing Scarborough to face Scarborough coming away with a 2 all draw further Alunga in the 4th minute getting the goal scored on the way before two quick goals from Colville for Scarborough put them 2-1 up. A Dante Casanova penalty in the 76th minute was enough to secure a point each. We had a cracking result against Oxford City, winning 3-1. Jasper Patterson with the goal in the 26th minute. Before Dante Casanova penalty again in the 42nd minute. Jasper Patterson again game, making it 3-0 in the 49th minute. And then Kamari Smith straight from centre got Oxford goal back. But they seem to be struggling in the league and have dropped down now to 11th point place. 17 points off Scarborough. December, one of the busiest months of the season, and we win the FA Trophy third round 5 0 against Epsleet. Jemaya Oluma in the third minute getting the score and underway in this one. For Ogley Can there, making it 2 0 in the 16th minute. On a stroke off half time, a Weltley lucky own goal. Hit a 3 0, he wasn't very lucky. George McLennan in the 75th minute, making it 4. And then Tom Oilett in the injury time, making it 5-0. We then smashed Dagenham Redbridge 4-1. A Casanova penalty again. And a normal goal, not bad for right back. Before smashing our rivals, Yeovil Town 5-1. Taylor Foreman got on the 27th minute. Casanova with another penalty. Casanova with another penalty. It's not a replay. Dan Casey making it four just before the stroke of half time. Oakley Connolly in the 76th minute making it five before we let Yeovil score in the 93rd minute. Never mind. And we had an unbelievable December not losing the game. Great football all round. And that great football propelled us up top of the league and we are third, now two points behind Scunthorpe. 
What a month. It's the new year in January, but we had a shock defeat, losing 3-2 to Wellstone in the FA Trophy fourth round. Goals got underway with Alunga in the second minute before Taylor flowing from the penalty spot, making it two. And somehow we throw this away. Wellstone get a goal back in the 58th minute. James Claridge in the 72nd minute got the equaliser. And two minutes from end, Yanni Colandis scores this to put Wellstone into the next round. A 94th minute winner from Oakley Cannonier was enough to beat Halifax 1-0, putting pressure on the teams above us in the league. And with a game in hand, we sit in second place, two points behind South End. Scunthorpe have lost it. February, and we were starting to score goals for fun with a 5-1 win over Rochdale. Oakley County in the 11th minute got the scoring underway. Before the most famous right back in the world at the moment, Dante Casanova making it 2. Further and Lunga making it 3 0 in the 29th minute. Before Daniel Otunde in the 36th minute making it 4 at half time. But scoring went down there. Otunde got his second goal in the 48th minute. And then Rochdale spoiled the party by scoring a goal in the 55th minute for Jordan Thomas. Was then followed up by a 7 1 win over Torquay. Casanova from the penalty spot again. And in the league, we sit third place now. Three points behind South End, and Scunthorpe have got some form back. March, and it wasn't exactly our best month, losing 2 0 to Hartlepool. Nico O'Reilly in the 34th minute, again, the scoring underway. Before a last minute win of Michael Alabria in the 90th, making it 2 0 and could prevent our promotion push. But then a 4 all draw against Kilimanjaro in the next game definitely put Dent into the season. Kieran Phillips making it 1 0 for Kilimanjaro before Dan Casey getting his first off three goals. And their second was an absolute beauty. Kieran Phillips again getting on the score sheet, making it 2 2. Before Dan Casey got his hat trick in the 35th minute, but the score went down there. Glenn Cleary in the 40th minute made it 3 or at half time. Oscar Goburn thought he might have nicked a winner for us, but not to be. Cleary had a taste for goals and got Kilimanjaro's fourth, and all points were shared. And with five games to go, we are now four points behind Scunthorpe, but we do have a game in hand. April, and we have five games remaining, but we got to face Southend and Scunthorpe. Southend were first. We were 3-1 up in the first half, somehow losing 4-3. Oakley County there in the 13th minute, got the score underway. Before Patton and Golfs, three minutes later, later made it 2-0. And before the 20th minute, we were 3-0 up with County there again as second. But for some reason, it all went tits up. Elliot Never in the 28th minute, again, one goal back. Harry Cardwell in the 50th minute, making it 3-2. Connor Barrett making sure the level, scores were level. But in the 67th minute, Will Honomack got the winner and we lose. Next, we face top of the table, Scunthorpe losing 3-1. Kirby in the first minute got Scunthorpe off to a flyer. Before Ebe in the 33rd minute, making it 2-0 to Scunthorpe and we had no way back. We did get some sort of consolation with Oliot in the 45th minute. Bit of pressure on the second half, but it didn't come as Janai in the 79th minute capitalised on the mistake, making it 3 1, and that is our season done. We finish in the playoff spot on 89 points, two points off top of the league, Scunthorpe. So, playoffs again. So, here we go again playoffs once more for our second consecutive season. We win the first playoff semi final 2 1 against Crawley. Curtis Allen in the second minute got Crawley off to a fantastic start, but Dan Casey in the 41st minute making it 1-1 for just after the hour mark. Dan Casey making it 2-1 and we have a place at Wembley for the National League playoff final. And it's against a team who just beat us a couple of games ago, South End. And we join the action in the 12th minute where Oilet gets the ball, gets the cross in, and it's deflected into an own goal. 1 0 Western, 12 minutes played. But Southend equalised with Elliot Newitt in the 23rd minute. 
before taking the lead in the 26th minute after off defence goes missing of a good goal by Junior Moyaz. Two minutes later and we are all over the place and it shows when Zalfren go 3-1 up, barely half an hour played. And it got worse when Dan Casey got sent off for that tackle. Second half and 3-1, nothing really happened until Junior Moraes got his second goal of the game, making it 4-1. But, of course, Casanova scores on penalty spot. Southend win 4-2. And unfortunately, that means we have another season in the National League. What an unbelievable season we have had again in the National League. Unfortunately, we lose in the playoff finals 4-2. Congratulations, Southend. Made it worse when we went down to 10 men, but for 10 minutes, we just fell apart at the back and Southend just ripped us to shreds. But never mind. We go again next season. We haven't been sacked yet. Competitions-wise, we didn't even get into the FA Cup again. We lost in the fourth qualifying round to Weymouth. FA Trophy, we went on the fourth round to Worldstone, losing 3-2. So, cut runs, we didn't have any again this year, not really. It was all about the league. Finishing in third place on 89 points. Two points of the league leaders and winners, Scunthorpe. We lost the like, we lost the least nine, but we did draw 11 games. If we just took two of those games... And changed it to a win, we could have gone up as champions. So losing nine, drawing eleven, and there's, and there's some big scores in there. Four four, three threes, couple of three threes, couple one four four. But winning twenty six, it's not bad. And we changed the tactic halfway through the season because it wasn't something that wasn't right. We changed it. It got us to third place. So it did didn't didn't do too bad, let's be honest. It was about it was a good season. It was a really good season. Squad-wise, what have we got? Cananea with 25 goals in his first season. The 21-year-old striker from Liverpool. Done really well. 25 goals, 41 appearances. Ayatunde on 18 goals with 37 appearances. He's injured. He missed the playoff finals. Another couple of weeks before he's back. 17 goals and 12 assists from Dante Casanova. I'm going to say most of them might be penalties. But still, he's had a good season. Hopefully, we can keep hold of him, have another crack at it next year. Alagunya, Flola Alagunya, 16 goals and 11 assists. He was injured, he missed the playoff final as well. He's out for two to five weeks. Jasper Patterson, 13 goals, 15 assists. Dan Casey, 12 goals, five assists, but got himself sent off in a playoff final. Not really improved either. He's just, mm, assist wise, highest assist was Patterson. I don't think we scored enough goals. I do think the tactic was okay, but I would prefer to have two up front. Maybe look next season they're going to a three at the back. Three five two possibility. Budget wise, we've got twenty K in the bank. A wage budget of not a lot. So it looks like we're gonna to have to sell most of the players that we've got. And people are asking to leave as well, so we can get rid of these. That's at least a hundred K maybe there. We can get rid of. And happy playing time. Sure, Hutchinson, he's going to leave as well. Contracts have earned out. We've got a few contracts expiring soon. So a bit of wages will come available there as well. That's it. Season three done. No promotion again. Another season in the National League. I said it's a hard league to get out of. Hopefully our reputation has gone up. It has. What we are going to do, we're going to do finance. We are going to ask for professional status for next season. So we are full-time team professional club because we are still part-timers. Improve the training facilities as well and youth facilities. But that's it. Hope you have enjoyed today's episode. If you have, please smash, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I shall see you for season four in the National League again for having a Western Super, the homegrown challenge. Until then, take a stay, look after yourself. I'll see you all very, very soon. Toodles.